How do you become a leader in pedaling electric bikes? Welcome back to another Textination interview. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from Pedigo Electric Bikes is founder and CEO, Don DiCostanzo. Thanks for taking the time, Don. Thank you for having me on your show. Well, the latest news is uh, Pedigo has surpassed an estimated $121 million in retail sales over the last year. Congratulations on that to begin with. Thank you. Let's start with a little background about the company, Don. How did it come about? You go back, I think, more than a decade. Well, yeah, actually, in 2006, I bought my first a handful of electric bikes. I lived at the top of a hill. I'd heard about electric bikes from when Lee Iacocca attempted to sell electric bikes in the late 1990s. And uh, he, he launched a company, uh, and he, he had the vision to sell 50,000 electric bikes a year. In the five years he was in business, he sold 12,000. He was ahead of his time. But in 2006, I got my first electric bike. In fact, I bought seven that year and I kept them in my garage. My friends would come over and ride them. We all had a blast. And in 2007, I decided to open a retail store as a hobby to sell electric vehicles. I sold electric skateboards. I sold electric scooters. I sold electric bicycles. I had electric golf carts and I even had an electric car in there, a Zen, Z-E-N-N. -N. They're since now out of business, but they're out of Canada. So I had this vision that the, the world would go electric, that electric made more sense. And I, I come from an uh, a, a eco-terrorist background. I, my family owned a chain of car dealerships and um, I work for an automotive chemical company. Uh, so I, I definitely had my share of fossil fuel burning uh, in my career. But this, tone, this I just sensed that there was gonna, something's gonna go on here and the electric vehicles would become the future. So after a year of operating that, I was frustrated because the people that were providing me the products really didn't care about the customer. All they cared about is selling a unit, sell a golf cart, sell a scooter, buy a scooter, sell a scooter. And I just didn't feel like it was the right thing. So in 2008, I exited the uh, automotive world and I started Pedigo, um, uh, basically on the back of a napkin and uh, funded it myself and created the name and then built it into what it is today. Wow, what a story. That's, that's really interesting, Don. And today, give us a snapshot of, of where the company is. You've got, you've got uh, retail outlets all over the place. Yeah, so one of the things I discovered along the way, we tried all kinds of different ways to market these electric bikes. We tried to sell them direct. We tried to do home shopping parties. I mean, we tried everything. And we just couldn't, we couldn't get bike shops to carry them. We got a handful of scooter shops to sell them, but they weren't really committed. They'd rather sell the scooter than the bike. And they just couldn't get committed until 2011 when one of our customers approached us and said that he would like to open a store in Huntington Beach and do nothing but sell pedagogues. I thought, well, that's an interesting idea. So uh, I said, but there's only one catch. And he goes, what's that? I said, well, I, we need you to rent them as well. And he said, okay, of course I want to rent them. So starting in 2012, in March of 2012, we opened the very first pedago store in Huntington Beach, California. Still very successful today, still one of our best stores uh, in, in the US and Canada. And he's and he taught, we, we kind of learned together what the model was. And we learned that the customers want to want to want to uh, 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 try the bikes before they buy it. And that's a critical element. And that's where the rentals come in. So you get to rent one. You don't have to come in and buy one, you can rent one. So you can say, hey, I want an electric bike. Uh, can I try one out? So we have a whole fleet of rentals in all the locations we're at and uh, the customers get to test drive. So that has launched us into now, today, we have almost 200 stores in the US and Canada. And there are places where you can go in and, and try one out, just test drive one, or you can rent one. Um, and of course you can buy one as well. But more importantly, you can get it serviced after the sale because they're gonna break, they're, they're mechanical devices. It's like you don't buy a car, not knowing that there's a, you know, a repair shop that you can get the, the, the car fixed at. So all of our stores, have sales, rentals, and they also offer repair, and they have parts, and they also sell accessories. Was that the repair aspect to one of the things that you had to overcome in getting the traditional bike dealers interested in this? We don't have people who can work on an electric motor kind of thing? Well, yes. Yeah, so we're not a traditional bike dealer. I think that's the distinguishing factor here. We as Pedigo, we're, we're just, we just, we're all we are is electric. So you're right. The existing bike shops, some of them, bike mechanics says, nope, I'm not going to touch that. It's electric. I uh, would like you to change the flat. Nope, won't going to touch it. It's electric. And there's some validity to that, though, because to, to, to change the rear wheel, there's, a, there's connections. 
there's, you know, there's motor connections. And if you disconnect those connections and don't do it in the right way, you could cause damage to the bike itself. So it's not unfound. Um, the, the cycle industry has been very, very, very slow to accept the adoption of electric bikes. And, and I'm surprised by it, but then again, I'm not. They're, they're, they're purists, they're competitive. Somehow they think that people riding an electric bike are cheating. Now, I'm not so sure who we're cheating. Um, I, I don't think we're cheating ourselves because we're out getting recreation, we're having fun, and we're getting exercise. Um, they somehow feel cheated by us riding an electric bike, and we're not, uh, we don't have the stamina or the agility or the energy level to ride a, a regular bike. So therefore, somehow we shouldn't be allowed to ride a bike, which is just, just you know, crazy, crazy logic. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, the, the, the people who do criticize because maybe you're not getting the same fitness benefits because you're not pedaling all of the time. But on the other hand, it's opened up whole new markets for, for cycling, including the senior market. Yeah, so you can argue how many cyclists there are in this country. Uh, some might say 5%, some might 10%, some might say 15%. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. It's the other 85 or 90% that we go after. And you're, you're exactly right. It's the person who, who stopped riding a bike because they age, they get a little bit older and said, I don't have the energy level. I can't go up that hill. Um, I, I'm afraid I'm not going to get home. So uh, that segment has now come back into cycling and it's been the best thing to ever happen in the cycling industry. Despite all their resistance and reluctance, you can't stop the consumer market. Once they get educated and once they get uh, involved in it, they're, they're, they get addicted. So to say that it doesn't have the health benefits, it's just nonsense. And we can talk about the health benefits all day long, but they're, they're not only physical, they're also psychological. One woman told me at a grand opening in our store in St. Louis, that she calls her pedigo her Prozac on two wheels. Now think about that for a minute. And she said she no longer has to take Prozac since she got her pedigo. And she said, the reason is when I'm a little bit down, a little bit depressed, I just go out and ride my bike and the world's fine again. And you know, anybody who experiences riding a bike will know that. But the, the challenge in, in the cycling industry, it's been the four letter word, hill. And the other four letter word, wind. Those are the things that stop people from riding bikes. If it were downhill all the time, People would ride bikes every day, all day long. But the reality is the world's up and down. There's wind, there's, there, there's different issues. So by having the ability to add that little bit of assistance when you need it, changes the whole dynamic. And more importantly, there's studies out of Europe that suggest that people who ride electric bikes actually get more exercise than people who ride a regular bike. And people say, well, how is that possible? Well, the study's pretty interesting. It says they ride more often and they ride longer. OK, so therefore they're getting their heart rate up while they're out riding. And so rather than riding 20 minutes or a half hour and getting some exercise and going home and laying on the couch and watching a football game, they instead ride all day or they ride for two or three hours or they ride to lunch and then they ride home from lunch. And so they're getting this physical exercise for much longer than if they were just on a regular bike where they'd get tired because you don't ever have to get tired. And if you do, then you quick simply switch on the throttle and let the bike take you home. Because our bikes are all both pedal assist, which means you can ride a bike and, and just add some pedal power and human power. And the two combined give you a nice smooth ride and you get some assistance. Or you can ride it with the throttle, which means you don't, your legs don't even have to move. And you can essentially use the, uh, the, 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 the uh, pedals as foot pegs. But most people don't ride it that way. In fact, I tell people, if I see you riding this bike and you're not pedaling, I'm going to take it away from you because there's no reason not to move your legs. Now, that's not true if, you're, if you've got sciatica or you've got diabetes and there's some ailment that you have that keeps you from pedaling, then why can't you enjoy cycling? Terrific. Well, the technology changes that you've seen since you got into this business are, are pretty significant in terms of uh, battery life, et cetera. What, what are you seeing? What, what, what has happened? Well, that was the game changer for me when I had my shop. Um, I, I was doing okay and I was selling a lot of bikes on it, but they were very heavy and the range was only 10 miles and the batteries only lasted for 100 cycles. So you'd have to buy new batteries. Now, the good news is the batteries are really cheap. They were, uh, they were 12 volt motorcycle batteries in tandem. So we'd take three uh, motorcycle sized batteries, would hook them all together and that would give us 36 volts. And they, were, they weighed 30 pounds and would mount them on the back. And then we'd put a big 
500 watt motor in the front hub to give the weight balance, okay? You couldn't put it all on the back. So we put the 500 watt motor up here and, and, and the 30 pound battery pack on it, made for a 100 pound bike when you were all done, which is just crazy, but it was an electric bike. And when, when I first saw the first lithium powered bike, I said, oh my God, game changer. And this was in 2008 when the lithium batteries were just starting to come of age. Up until then, every, every electric bike was lead acid. And they just did lead acid batteries are just not designed for rapid uh, discharge and rapid recharge. They're designed for start your car, set idle until you need to start your car again tomorrow or run on a constant state. So lithium was the game changer. And so not only were they lighter, but they also lasted much longer. And back then the charge cycles were 500 to 1,000. Now they're 2,000. And now people ask me, well, how far is the, gonna, the bike going to take me? And I always answer the same question, further than you're going to want to go. And that's a true statement. Our newest battery pack is, uh, is uh, will, will travel, will take you about 60 to 80 miles on a charge. And that's without pedaling. So if you, if you don't pedal, you can go 60 or 80 miles. If you add pedaling to it, you can go 100, 200, you go 300 miles if you're adding the pedal. So there's five levels of assistance. If you're in pedal assist one, you'd probably go 200 miles. If you're in pedal assist two, maybe 150. Pedal assist three, maybe 100. And as you as you go to the higher levels, uh, you, you you use more energy. But still, I don't know too many riders that want to ride more than 40 or 50 miles in a day. And then the recharge time is only about four hours. So you can easily charge it and go riding again the next day. And since they're removable, I suppose if you wanted to carry one in a backpack, another one, you probably could. Yeah, we have customers that actually carry three. One guy rode 200 <laughs> miles and they didn't go as far. So yeah, so it plugs in very easily. Um, it goes, you can, you can put it in a paneer bag. You can put two, one on each side if you wanted to carry two extra ones. Not really necessary. Um, what people do if they're, if they're a couple and they want to go a long range, say they want to go on an 80 mile trip, I tell the lighter person, the heavier person to swap halfway to the trip because the heavier person is going to use more energy so they can equalize the batteries. But the other thing, we've added some safety features now. We've got side marker lamps on the, on the light too. And this is a brake light and a blinker as well. So we've added a lot of features to the, to the bike that make it more, um, more, like a, more like a car, I guess. Uh, I took lessons from the car companies. They put big, bold lights on the back and what's not good for safety for that. And this is a bright light, even in the daytime. It'll blast you out, but at nighttime, you can see, right? And it also serves as a brake light as well. What are some of the other things that differentiate the, the Pedego bikes from your competitors? Lots of companies out there. Oh, yeah. So when, when I started, there were actually five of us in business selling electric bikes. We were the fifth. Um, three of them are out of business. Uh, one of them has been sold, I think, twice and is, is struggling um, because they didn't take the, the customer-centric approach. So we believe that the customer is the most important part of the bike, not the bike. The bike is just an apparatus. It's just a device for people to go out and have fun. So we treat this as fun. Everything we do is fun. You go out and ride one of these bikes, you're going to have fun. It's actually more fun riding one of these bikes up a hill than it is down a hill. Anybody who rides one will tell you that. It's just fun to ride up a hill. It's a sense of empowerment. So we've, we, we, we've built this community around the bike being fun. And we have 18 different models. And in those models, we have different sizes and different styles. So our most popular style is our cruiser bike. And we make, I don't know, a hundred different iterations of that. Different colors, different sizes, different styles. Because I'm six foot one. So I ride a 29 inch uh, uh, comfort, uh, 25 inch interceptor because uh, I'm a big guy. And so I need a large bike. I, and then we make a small bike. We make a 26 inch, which is for average folks. And then we make a small bike for people who are less than five, three or five, four, 24 inch bike. So in that uh, spectrum of, and, and we make them in classic, which would be most people would call a men's. And then we make them in a step through, which is an easy on and off bike. Um, and then we make them in different sizes and different colors because the customers are interested in a selection. You don't go in and, and do a shoe store and they've got one pair of shoes and, and you don't go to a car dealership where they have one model. We have 18 different models, different sizes and different colors. And that's a huge differentiator. The other thing is the only thing we do is electric bikes. We're not anything but that. We only do electric bikes. We don't, we make accessories, but we're only in the electric bike business. We don't make regular bikes. We don't make scooters. We don't make any. And our stores are the same way. They're only um, selling electric bikes. So that commitment to the product line has allowed us to be ahead of everybody as far as technology is concerned. 
Our next generation of bikes we're launching next year is going to have 14 different features on it that nobody else has. They're all different things that we've learned because we started building bikes in 2008. We know what they we know what the customers want. We at end we're able to get the, because of the size we are now, we're able to get our uh, suppliers to provide us the things that we want to add uh, to a bike and make them uh, the top, the best quality. And at the top of the list of our customer survey, um, the goal of the last survey we did, we surveyed 3,711 customer, Pedigo customers, and the 94% of them expect quality to the most important part of it. And 89% of them say we achieved that. Now, I'm a little frustrated by that. I'd like it to be over. They 94% expected quality to be their differentiator, and only 89% got there. So we've got a little bit of work to do. What kinds of innovations? You hinted at some things to come. What kinds of innovations can we look forward to? Well, you're going to have to wait and see. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, I, can, I can tell you that uh, a lot of the things that are happening, there's class one, class two, and class three bikes. That's the, the classification. So class one means it's pedal assist, which means there's no, there's no throttle. Class two means it has a throttle. And a class three means it'll go 28 miles per hour. The first two will only go 20 miles per hour. We've got bikes now. One bike will do all three. So our dealer, the customer can decide when they buy the bike, whether they want it to be a class one, class two, or class three. And then the dealer can tune it accordingly. Really, really exciting. Where does pricing start, Don? Our basic model, our, our element, which is our number one selling bike is $1,895. Um, and then our most expensive bike is our full suspension mountain bike. And it's $5,495. For more info, the best place to go is? Easy, pedigo.com. It's spelled out behind me, pedigo, P-E-D-E-G-O.com. There you can locate your local dealer. You can look at our different models. You can get a sense for who it is. And then if you're in, on Facebook, we've got a Facebook owners group, which will let you join, which will show you how much people are delighted with their product that they buy. Um, the most important thing is that people considering electric bike is to try one before you buy one. Terrific. Again, it's pedego, P-E-D-E-G-O dot com. Congratulations on the innovation and all of the success. Don DiCostanzo, thank you for taking the time with us. Thank you for having me. Now this, it takes a lot of listening to build a better radio, and that's just what the folks at Sea Crane have done. Bob Crane and his crew, nestled among the rivers and tallest trees in the world in Fortuna, California, have made a habit of listening to their customers, and that's just what they've done in building the CC Skywave SSB, the Swiss Army knife of portable radios. For everyday listening to AM or FM in the yard or patio or on the nightstand, Without having to drain a mobile phone battery, it's a great companion. But it is also a companion equipped for NOAA weather information and alerts that can be life-saving. You can listen to FEMA and Coast Guard transmissions too. Beyond all of that, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. It's compact, easy to take with you, and built to last. The CC SkyWave SSB. Click on the link at textonation.com.